Here's another example of kinematics. A smoothly oops, rolling ball starting at x naught. And here it is. Here's Hal sitting on the track, and it's starting at 50 centimeters. So in this case, that is x naught. x naught means the position at a certain time, usually time equals zero. So let's do the graph first. Graph. All right. Let's see. So again, we're going to plot time down there, and we're going to plot position up here. And again, this is the origin here for time and position. And we say at time equals zero, where is the ball? Well, it's at x naught. But what we want to study now, and we're going to say that must then be uh, 50. What we're going to study now is this smooth motion. So what I'll do is I'll just hit it, and there it is. Maybe you've seen motion like that before. Here it is around, uh, oh, OK, at uh, 50. And I'll just give it a little push, and there's our uniform motion. Now, this is rolling motion. Rolling is actually a pretty complicated motion when you really get into what's happening to the entire ball. But we don't want to talk about rolling yet. We'll get to it later. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to assume, we're going to pretend that it's just sliding, that it's really just a simple motion. There's no rolling involved. So we're kind of doing a model. Right? A model is when you have something that's really complicated situation you describe with simpler equations. So this is our very first model, is rather than having a rolling ball, Let's just say it's a smoothly moving ball and not worry about the rolling. And in this case, it'll work out. Okay? So now let's think about what this graph would look like. Here are some even uh, points in time. And you know, if it started at 50 and it was moving uh, to larger x, to larger position, then it would be higher at this time. And since it was kind of uniform uh, motion or smooth motion, it would be the same amount higher is you move the same amount of time. So this graph would make a line like that. So the position time graph for smooth motion is a line. Okay. The ball um, has a property, has something, has velocity. All right. So here, let me uh, define velocity. So velocity is the rate of change of position with time. All right. So velocity, you've heard of speed, velocity. We'll get into the details of the differences of those later. But for now, that's all we mean. It has some velocity. When we write velocity in equations, we write it like that. Or that's how I'm going to write it for this class. So if you don't know, if you don't know what that is, that's a cursive V. I write it with a little cursive V. I don't think they teach cursive anymore. So in case you're curious, that's my cursive V. And it's in the unit meters per second. Okay. Now, how you get the velocity from a graph like this is if it's position, time, it makes a line. And the slope of the graph equals the velocity. So maybe you're familiar with lines y equals mx plus b, et cetera. The slope is the velocity. So that's the graph. Now let's look at um, the equation. Let's see. The equation looks something like this. We're doing kinematics, so we want to describe the position. So again, the x on the left of the equal sign is a function of time. We're describing the position as a function of time. And it equals that x naught. That's where it started. You might call it its initial position, x naught. And then you have to add how much further it went, which is equal to v times t. So there's some little simple descriptions of the two terms. x equals x naught plus v times t. So this is one useful kinematics equation to know. Okay. 
Um, no, and it describes this line. Now in algebra class or some other math class, you might have learned that the equation for a line is that, y equals mx plus b. So let's make sure you're clear on what's going on, because it doesn't look the same. Right? Well, remember, in physics, we don't follow rules about what has to go on this axis and what goes on that axis. We call everything anything we want. So in this case, this is the equation of a line, and it does have this form, but you've got to remember, we're plotting x on the vertical axis. x is the function we're looking for. Instead of it being calling it y or calling it f of x, it's x. So that's why, in this case, these are kind of the same. For your old y equals mx plus b thinking, y is now x. And then, when you did in algebra class, y is a function of x, this axis was x. Well, now this axis is time. <coughs> right? This is the independent variable. So time is down here. So when you used to write x there, you're actually writing it as time now there. Okay. And I just told you that the slope is equal to v. So what you used to call m as the slope is now v, like that. And then finally, you used to have this thing called the y-intercept. It was where the graph crosses the, what you then called the y-axis when x was 0, blah, blah, blah. It looked like that. Well, this is now the same thing. x naught is basically the intercept, but in this case, it's the intercept on the x-axis. It's the value of x when time is 0, like that. So it is in the form y equals mx plus b. It's just in physics, we rename everything.